Welcome everyone to another episode of our podcast series. Hashtag the MI guys. The MI guys. Yeah. So we're with IFIOC. This is Casey Jackson. I'm Tammy Kalei. And um, we provide evidence-based communication training and skills um, to help but improve people's outcomes and improve your communities. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's a really cool process. So, so today's question comes from one of the many folks that sent in questions. They asked, when can you use MI or when do you use MI and can you use it all the time? That is a great question. And what I'll tell you is you'll probably get different answers depending on which MI trainer that you run into. Um, you may have listened to one of our podcast webcasts before specifically is, am I changing the world? Uh, and the conversation that actually Tammy was involved in and John uh, Gilbert were involved in as well. So I think there's a spectrum. When you think about MI and communicating with motivational learning, I think there's a spectrum that you can think about all the ways we could potentially use motivational learning. Mm -hmm. From a purist perspective, what I will tell you is motivation was designed and developed to affect sustained behavior change. So it was kind of a, an alternate to a medical model or a compliance model um, and thinking more from a person-centered approach with a lot of strategy and skill around that. So what I can, what I'll say safely and feel very comfortable with is predominantly when you think of motivational interviewing, you're thinking about, am I either trying to reduce tension or discord or resistance uh, in a dialogue or energy, negative energy in a conversation, perfect time to use motivational interviewing. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to affect a long-term or a sustained behavior change, you're gonna be thinking motivational interviewing. Mm -hmm. What I think of in terms of, is it used in every situation? The first thing I'd say is I don't think it's used in every situation. Um, examples that I use are like if I have you know one of my younger daughters is running out into the street I'm gonna grab her arm and pull her back onto the sidewalk it makes a lot of sense. I'm not gonna amplify her ambivalence um, so it's a compliance interaction there after the fact I have may have more of an MI based conversation in terms of just her safety security and depending on how old she is and issues like that but if I'm trying to work on more of a behavior change perspective, I can still use motivational learning, but in certain times or certain moments, it's not MI based. If Tammy and I have had a long day of, of working and, and, and training and doing all the things that we do, we may go out and have a, a cup of coffee or a glass of wine and, and have a conversation. That's not necessarily an MI based conversation. It can be just decompressing, um, talking about our families and, and uh, some work stuff. Those aren't fundamentally MI-based conversations. There's no change talk, there's no tension between Tammy and I. If Tammy and I were training together and there was some bumps in the road in the training between the two of us, yeah. we may have, I may step into an MI conversation after the fact or when we, we go to debrief. Here's the thing that I want people to understand and th this comes up a significant amount in training as well too. People worry that the more people that know and understand are skilled at MI, that somebody's gonna MI me. And and when we work together, and Tammy and John and I work together a lot, people are afraid like, oh, do you guys get tired of MI in each other? And what I keep thinking is like this ratchet or this screwdriver, like, okay, it's time to MI Tammy. Yeah. That's not what motivational learning is. And when I've, for anybody that's been through any training with me who's asked that question, what I consistently say is, of all the people in my life, I have never had somebody upset because I leave my reality and step into their reality without judgment. Exactly. Figure out what their values are and help them get clear about where do they want to be. What is more difficult about having MI conversations with friends, family, colleagues, so I'm not trying to MI Tammy. All I want to do is be able to find out are there ways that we can behave that our behaviors line up with what our values and our goals are. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what I want to orchestrate that conversation. And the hardest part about this, especially when it's with family, friends, colleagues, where it's not MIing them, is I really have to have a good self-assessment of how attached am I to the outcome. If I'm attached to the outcome, it is really hard to manage your writing reflex. Mm -hmm. It is really hard to stay in that, that place of trying to be unbiased in this conversation and just be present and then be attending to their sustained talk, change talk in those situations. So when you think about the, the range of any conversation from a Monday to a Friday or a Monday to a Sunday or a Monday to a Monday, there's the, the very low likelihood that every single one of those conversations is gonna be MI based. If I'm checking out of the grocery store and just chatting with the checker, I may not use motivational interviewing because it's not a behavior change conversation and I doubt there's gonna be much conflict there. 
yet, sense. yet, what I can do is I can practice some of my basic MI skills. So I may talk to a checker and just start with an open-ended question and say, you know, what is it like to be on your feet all day? And then I can practice stepping inside of her reality or his reality in their reality and trying to articulate what I think is going on and practice my strategic reflective statements. So I'm not doing motivational interviewing, but I can be respectfully listening and stepping into somebody else's worldview. And I know when I do that, I'm increasing my skill set for when I really do want to use it in more of the setting in which I work. So again, you don't have to use it in every situation. It's not appropriate to use it in every conversation. But the thing I always think of is, is it harmful if we're more conscious about why we're opening our mouth? Especially in this day and age, in this political environment, of all the things that we struggle with and stress over and all the craziness that can happen in the world, what harm comes from slowing down for a minute and stepping inside somebody else's reality and getting a sense of where they're coming from? Mm -hmm. Partly what's difficult about that is it's exhausting when you're focused on everybody else's reality all of the time. Mm -hmm. So part of it is just from a nurturing and a, to avoid compassion fatigue and, and just getting burned out is there's times that you need your own time and your attention. So, so when you think again about that full range from again a Monday to a Monday, there's gonna be times that MI is really appropriate. There's times you could use MI and choose not to. There's times that you don't use MI and you should have um, when you look back in retrospect. But those are the things that I'd say in terms of do you use MI in every conversation? I think it's, you know, there's times that if that's what you're getting paid to do to affect behavior change, absolutely. I think mm -hmm. it's predominantly what we should be doing. It ties into another one of the webcasts, the brief webcasts we did, um, in terms of can I share my opinion? It's the same thing. If somebody's showing up, you, you're getting paid to do something very specifically in healthcare, behavioral health, or long term care, or employment services, you know, law enforcement, any of the things we do trainings with. If you run into those situations and your job is to affect behavior change, I'm going to say, predominantly my personal belief, professional belief, is that you should be using more of an MI approach if you're trying to affect behavior change. So again, part of it's a choice, part of it's indicated by your role, but that's where I'd be coming from and thinking about, is MI something I should be using all the time? So I'm just gonna, sorry, throw one more question at you, Perfect. but I'm curious too, since, since it's a skill that can be, there's a lot of skills that can be used yes. all the time, but not necessarily MI is yes. used all the time. What is there any um, person that would not benefit from learning this skill or some of these skills? Oh, that's another great question. Somebody that wouldn't benefit from learning the skills? Yeah. So, like just as a professional? Yeah, just in general. Because as, as you're speaking, I'm just running through, gosh, this is great for leaders, it's great for managers, it's great for people in healthcare. It's, it, you know, and so I'm just like, is there anyone that it wouldn't be great for? <laughs> You're asking somebody that's very, very biased. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna own it right out of the gate. I am very biased. And this is somebody, you know, I've been in the, in human service and behavioral health for over 30 years now. Um, and so, and I've worked in prisons, I've worked, you know, so many different settings that I've been able to work in and lucky enough to be employed in. And there's not a single time that I think, oh, there's no need to be strategically thinking about how to respond or ways that I can improve the outcome of this conversation. So as an administrator myself, as a clinician, as a social worker, I think of any situation I've been in, I think even in public meetings, working with community partners, with mm -hmm. allied services, there's never a bad time for people to feel heard and understood to find out what values are and how to move the conversation forward in a productive manner. Mm -hmm. So so I, I, all I'll say first is I am biased. I, I think it's probably the best skill set that I've learned in, in 30 years uh, in my profession. And then I step back and think, but I also don't think MI is for every conversation. So when you're asking, is there a profession that wouldn't need to, it really doesn't serve them well, what I would think is if there's fundamentally no behavior change that you're working on, maybe it's not a certain. If you're, you work potentially, if all you're doing is it's you in a truck picking up garbage cans, that's not particularly, there's not a lot of customer service, there's not a lot of interaction there. So I mean, that's a good point. So, so there's ones that I can see that it's just like, yeah. it's just not my, my fundamental core responsibility has nothing to do with another human being. Mm -hmm. um, in those kind of situations, I think, I don't think that would be something I'd really be pushing heavy. But then I think of all the professions out there, if we have any communication or human interaction, any form of customer service, or if you have any customers you work with that you really feel like this is something I want to get really good engagement or more productive, then I'm I, my bias is always going to be 
I think almost every situation can learn motivational leadership. But but being realistic, I think there's a range of professions that it's just truly not indicated. Okay, makes a lot of sense. So yeah, well, thank you so much for answering. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and feel free to send any questions our way. Perfect. And you know what the thing is, is we're just always trying to help people to provide that communication solution that's really going to change your world, professionally and personally. So again, that's the impetus to keep asking, bring on the questions, bring on uh, Do it. any ideas that you have or, or things you want us to talk about. This program's all about you. So we appreciate your time and your interest. Bye. Take care.